and welcome to the show. The January Blues have been well and truly swept away in National League Rugby with a torrential rain right across the country, which has even forced me inside on this occasion. It's also caused a whirlwind of unpredictability in the top half of National 2 East. It's so tight between the top seven teams, and two of them who are right in the middle of the mix meet here in Kent. Tombridge Judians have had a roller coaster of a season since their Nat 1 relegation, and last week's loss made them drop two places. Old Albania have scored 17 points less than their hosts, but sit second in the table, a massive improvement from last year in their hunt for a first National 1 season since 2018. A tough 30 minutes at the Slade, but TJ's gradually getting on top. Freeman with the climb, quick hands to Duffy. Walsh, the captain, leads the charge to Hotston with the deep run. That's the step, and that's the reward. Brian Hotston glides his way through OAs, and finally, we have the first try. A, a move off the, straight off the training pad, inside ball to uh, Howard, who's been in great form recently. Seem to be attacking that corner quite a bit with the kicking game at the moment. I guess it's partly because of the wind as well. It's an absolute downpour here. Certainly not dampening TJ's spirits in attack. Here they come through self, eventually brought down by OAs. It's picked up now by Grucock. It's as easy as that for Pete Dankert's men. Josh Grucock with his first try of the season. How crucial could it be? Nothing too fancy or exciting to report, but um, got the ball up to the OA's line and a few pick and goes uh, and managed to get over. The OA's, OA's need to score next to stay in this game. Talk about backs to the wall. Albanian down a man, defending five metres out. This penalty has been taken quickly. TJ's looking to pounce and they take the chance. Dan George can't believe it, but it's a third try for the hosts. Jake Hardcastle with a special moment in his young career. Jake Hassel, he's uh, come through the academy with us and he's gone over the line with a pick and go. The smile on his face just shows how much it means to the team and him himself. So now 21 nil. we just don't want to give him a foothold in this game. Um, Less than 10 minutes to go, time running out for OAs here. Manelli breaks. He loses the ball, and now there's a chance for OAs. Comes to Adajimi, and they won't catch him now. The Saracens Academy man sprints into the corner with his first try in nearly three months, and could that spark life into the visitors? Once again, the conditions having their say. A first defeat since the end of October looks imminent, unless they can drag a miracle out the mud. Here's the response. What a drive from the dominant pack of the day. Edging closer and closer to the try line. Kendrick onto the loose ball. He spotted a gap. Closes up on him. But the support rumbles in like thunder. And it rolls over the line for the bonus point. What a difference a week makes for the hosts. When we got ourselves into the 22, we got scrum going forward like that. Miss Finder gave us the advantage, which is great. We could get on the front football. Bonus point against Albanians at home. I mean, the boys would be absolutely elated. So you consider the injury woes at TJ's. This is a superb performance from the host. Duffy charging forward onto that loose ball. Whitmarsh barreling in, but the advantage was coming. So we go back for the penalty. It will fall to Tom White. He's added eight points to his tally from the four conversions. And this one easily drops in. A storming day from the hosts to bring a hail of tries to leave the spirits of their fellow title chasers dampened. I mean, we, I think we played better in the worst conditions anyway. We stick to the game plan, held it quite tight. Um, and yeah, come out on top really. Yeah, just kept discipline. You got a try out of it as well, big moment for yourself. Talk me through it. I saw to the blind side, they just weren't set. I just screamed to Duffy, just give me the ball, Duffy, give me the ball. I just tucked and went, hit it on the line, got a try. Tom Bridge Judges have got a great academy set up here and you've come all the way through that as well. Yeah, the, the academy is something extraordinary. Like, I do encourage most young kids to come down to any, any rugby club, but TJ's is uh, something special. When I was growing up, I grew up in a rougher area and people was getting into all sorts and I found rugby. Um, and it basically, yeah, it basically saved me. And then now I'm here playing with the first team, which I never thought I'd be doing, but here we are. Five years, either premiership level or, you know, I'd, I'd be happy sticking here. I just want to keep playing rugby. No matter what, I'll still be playing. Let's head up to National 1 now, where there was a crunch relegation clash at the Sycamores. This one would always be an eye-catcher, and it was Leeds Tykes who started the stronger, Kieran Davis dummying his way over in the first minute. 
Jacob Mouncey added a bonus point try five minutes before the break, which sparked Isha into life. Andy Hamilton giving them hope on 67 minutes. The men from Molesley Road ramped up the pressure and it was Ben Atkins who dropped over seven minutes from time to complete a remarkable turnaround. And it was a big day for the McNulty's at Billsley Common as Birmingham Mosley Sam and Isaac welcomed their brother Chinna's prop Josh to Birmingham who scored here. When Robert Knox dropped over early in the second period, the home team had recovered and were in the driving seat. But from then on, the visitors dominated with Josh McNulty scoring his hat-trick try on 62 minutes and ensuring Chinna claimed the bonus point for back-to-back -back wins. Let's head to Brickfields, where an entertaining affair saw Cinderford opening the scoring following their traditional methods, hooker Nathan Taylor profiting. Following a 50-22, number eight Michael Stupple scored out wide for Plymouth Albion, which ensured the teams could not be separated at the half-time whistle. It stayed that way until 10 minutes from the end, winger Craig Duncan breaking free down the right to release Thomas Putt, winning it for Albion in dramatic style. Cambridge continued their impressive start to 2023 with winger Kwaku Eziedu breaking free in the first 60 seconds, the Blood and Sand defended resolutely in the early stages of the second half when Will Priestley scored their fifth try with his first involvement of the game. Congratulations to Cambridge on the win. Um, thoroughly deserved. Um, I thought they were dominant pretty much throughout the whole game in very testing conditions. The rain came down, the wind was there. Our lads stuck to the task, uh, got a couple of tries near the end, uh, got a bit of pride back into the scoreline, um, but Cambridge showed why they're a top three team. Rosslyn Park would have been expecting a rout when Austin Hay grabbed his second and Rosslyn's third without reply with a maul from the 22 in the first 25 minutes. Hull, struggling without a win all campaign, then showed some grit with winger Jack Edwards reducing the deficit before the break. In a non-stop final 10 minutes, the visitors dropped over the whitewash three times, but when prop Sam Garvey scored for Park, the home fans could breathe again. Heading west along the M4, Rams enjoyed an impressive opening against Bishop Stortford. Scrum half Ollie Allen filling the boots of Ollie Cole with a try on 16 minutes. Stortford struggled with discipline and reduced to 13 when Charlie Robson nipped over on the right to secure the bonus point for the hosts. In a match that had seven yellows in total, the Hertfordshire side finished strongly with Alex Raymond getting over on the final whistle to make the scoreline respectable. And a treat in Taunton. Titans left Sale FC shock just two minutes in when Harry Wright opened the scoring after some good footwork from Emmanuel Feo Wabosa. Sale leveled through Joshua Brown midway through the first half, and it was the hooker who extended the lead for the visitors right on the break. Even after Thomas Brady intercepted a missed time pass to increase the lead, the home team came back into it again, denying the Manchester side a bonus point. There were some fast starts in National 1 as five of the seven games saw tries in the first 10 minutes. Find out more about our partners VO at ncarugby.com. While there are no changes in the top half, the leading four teams have stretched away from Cinderford. Sale FC's failure to take a scoring bonus means Rams are just three points behind. It's the same story at the bottom. All teams except DMP took points in round 16, with Chinna and Isha's bonus point wins pulling themselves clear of danger. Let's head back to National 2 East now, see how the other promotion chase has got on, starting 20 miles away. We start inside the M25. Canterbury's hopes of a Blackheath upset vanished instantly as Jake Lloyd and Alex Brown linked up after less than a minute. Tom Finch sold a dummy to the highest bidder after Tom Stradick came away with a Canterbury ball. The bonus point was secured by Archie Holland six minutes later. Canterbury would get 12 points back, but Chris Bell scored the sixth and final try for the hosts, parading over the line from 25 metres out. 25 miles southwest, a similar demolition was taking place. Dorking's forwards were unstoppable, as shown by Jonathan Ellis's try from a well executed line out. Substitute Harry Mahoney made it a quintet of tries for Dorking after sustained pressure inside Seven Oaks 22 allowed the hooker to finish the game in style. 
Guernsey started brilliantly in East Anglia as their rolling mall thundered over, catching North Walsham napping as they rolled over unopposed with Tom Seelham. But for the first time this season, Walsham recorded back-to-back -back home wins. Matthew Hodgson was vital to his side scoring 20 unanswered points scored by the hosts. The wind picked up in the second half and Guernsey got the only score, a consolation try from Hugo Culverhouse, but they're left disappointed after missed opportunities through the match. How good is Curtis Barnes? Just the four tries for the winger as Worthing Raiders scored ten times against a shell-shocked Rochford 100 team. Dan Sargent, Frank Taggart and Charlie Clare all crossed the white line, but it was Barnes who scored in the 77th minute, adding more misery to Rochford's afternoon. Speaking of teams that scored more than 60 points, Bury St Edmunds showed no mercy. It took 20 minutes for Patrick Robinson to score, but then the points kept racking up. Westcliff, hampered by a virus, never gave up, but the visitors simply outclassed their opponents. Robert Conquest scored the ninth try to close out the match. And things heated up in the capital. Barnes broke the deadlock in a top-half clash with Henley Hawks, with Alexander March taking the honours from a driving maul. Two tries in the second half brought Henley right back into the mix, including this cracking score from winger Ryan Crowley, making it two tries in three games. The boot of Lewis Ellis was on fire for Barnes, though, scoring over half their points. This included a trio of penalty kicks to put the game out of reach. A half-century of tries were scored in National 2 East this weekend. Worthing Raiders, Bury St Edmunds and Blackheath scored half of them in their dominant wins. More musical chairs this week, Dorking and Worthing climbed two places as Old Albanians slipped to fourth, while Tunbridge Judians overtake Henley Hawks. Bury St Edmunds' big win in Essex is one of two for the bottom seven sides, the other coming for North Walsham, who are just four points off Seven Oaks and Canterbury. Here's the action from National 2 North. It was second versus third on the northwest coast. And both sides were at their best in Lancashire. Visitors Hull Ionian started better as Cameron Burnhill scored in the corner for the opening try. Their lead, though, would only last seven minutes as Fylde hit back through Cameron Potts, finishing the slick move involving most of the back line under the posts. While Lewis Minikin was up to his usual tricks for a leveller before the break, it was the Woodlands side who nicked it thanks to Connor Wilkinson in the last five minutes. Tabletop of Sedgley Park made light work of a struggling Harrogate side. Beltus non lay starting proceedings just before the 20 minute mark. The bonus was secured in familiar fashion as Danny Marr trotted down at the back of a driving line out, and his try would have extra importance in their title hopes. It was a very wet day at the Avenue as Wharfdale hosted bottom side Bladen and won convincingly Matt Spears opening the scoring from a driving mall. The third try was scored just after half time following an infringement from Bladen. Quick thinking Sam Gowdy tapped and went, finishing off convincingly. Heading to the bottom half, Huddersfield were brimming with confidence on their return to Lockwood Park as Lewis Workman scored after just two minutes. Will Clapham responded almost immediately for Preston Grasshoppers though, he dotted down as they looked for a first win since mid-December. While Ben Dorrington scored the only try for the visitors with creativity, Will Milner's boot won the day for Huddersfield, kicking three second-half penalties for back-to-back -back wins. 30 miles away, Chester wanted to bring an end to their struggles on the road in the Steel City, and Michael Burns' score in the first quarter offered hope of that happening. But Christian Hooper responded to take Sheffield into the lead at half-time, their own hopes of a first win since mid-October raised at Abbeydale Road. But it was Byrne who decided things through his second try of the game for Chester, scoring three minutes after half-time for their first win of 2023. And big news from the North East, Tyndale had their sights on becoming the latest team to beat Rotherham Titans after just 14 minutes. Will Miller here. It was a second trip to the area in two weeks for the Yorkshire side, having beaten Bladen and scrum half Sam Boxall appeared to have them on the right track. Ben Wood's side would put in a superb second half performance though, which Titans couldn't answer as Jake Rogers gave Tyndale a first win since the end of November. Some tight action in National 2 North with four games seeing four tries or less scored, 
Sheffield Tigers versus Otley was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. While Fylde moved eight points clear of Hull Ionians, they lose a point on Sedgley Park in what is now a two-horse race. Otley stayed fourth as Rotherham Titans and Chester swap a game. Wolfdale capitalised on Sheffield Tigers' postponed game. Huddersfield's superb run puts them 13 clear of relegation, where Harrogate and Bladen look stranded. And let's finish in National 2 West, where there was a Bristol derby at Station Road. And it certainly delivered. Clifton debutant Will O'Connor got straight down to business as he teed up Alex Talbot for the first of three tries in the opening half hour. Aldred Cliffians may have been seven places behind at kickoff, but they were a match for the title chasers. Ex Clifton man Thomas Gwilliam scoring here. But the purple side of Bristol would hold off the red charge. Will Owen making it two tries in two games to remain unbeaten since the start of November. The other Bristol side were in Birmingham and stormed ahead against Bourneville. Kieran Donoghue taking 14 of 19 points in the same number of minutes. Bar last week's loss to Lucktonians, the hosts have enjoyed scoring form and a bonus point winning try from Sam Grimshaw, his second of the day, put them ahead. Patience was the name of the game for Dings though, as Matt Smith crossed the line for five points in a 10-try thriller at Avery Fields. Third met fourth in Cornwall and it was a memorable clash. As Frankie Slightholm pulled Hinkley into the contest, Red Ruth's top scoring hooker Richard Brown put them ahead. That was as close as it got due to the visitors' discipline. As Alex Salt saw red in the second half, gaps opened up which saw Red Ruth captain Ben Fox cross. And the men in red, now on three consecutive wins, continued to press on Hinkley's defence to secure a bonus point through sub Mackenzie Oliver. This could have left Leicester Lions worrying as they were having a tussle with Luptonians in their first home game in over a month before Will Ward went over. But the league leaders continued to chip away and forced four yellow cards out of the Herefordshire side, allowing Devon Constant to comfortably run in the victory try. We saw what they did to Clifton, really, really aggressive defence, managed the game really well, so we knew we had to to try and dominate set piece, which thankfully we did, and that was probably the biggest factor in terms of us winning the game. But really, really tough conditions, and um, thought the boys dug in really well. Um, obviously, to nil in the second half was a was a massive bonus. Um, 60 miles west, fans at Stoughton Park were treated to a try every six minutes on average. In the first 20, four were scored, but three went to Exeter University. With 30 minutes to go, Starbridge had just two tries. Tom Ryman with the second of them as the students hammered away through their pack. It's the first back-to-back -back win since November for Exeter, Ronan Kelly finishing the scoring, while the Midlanders have just 11 tries in their last four games. The bottom half clash took place at Pottington Road, where it was dominated by Barnstable. It took them 50 minutes to stretch away though, Brandon Moore getting them started. With the four second half tries coming from the forward, a fifth score by Dan Robson gave the hosts back-to-back -back home wins. And a cracker at the crumb. Hornets wasted no time in their pursuit to recover from the Red Ruth loss with a penalty try in the opening quarter. Three tries in over 13 minutes though would give Loughborough students the edge. Isaac Bell ensuring this lead was secured in the last minute of the first half. Rhys Malone enjoyed a strong kicking game which he finished with a penalty but a late Hornets surge ended with Aidan Chenoweth's try ensuring a nervy end to the day. There was certainly a home advantage in National 2 West this week with six of the seven hosts taking victory. Check out the YouTube channel for loads of exciting content. Some big changes below the top two. Red Ruth and Ding's Crusaders push Hinkley down two places while Exeter University's big win puts them two ahead of Loughtonians. Loughborough students remain in touch, but the big bottom half winners were Barnstable, climbing over Hornets and Newport Salop. They are four clear of tightrope walking Bourneville. Well, that's it from a soaking wet slate as Tombridge Juddian see off Old Albanian and the rain for a vital Natsu East victory. See you next week. What's up guys, Warren Muggleson here, taking shelter in a torrential Tombridge. Thank you so much for watching that National League Rugby video. For more from the third and fourth tiers of English rugby, then subscribe.
just over here. And don't forget to click the bell too, so you're notified when new content is published. That one there, there may have been a lot of rain in the country, but that's not going to stop National League Rugby.